Hey, and welcome to the Mentored Engineer. Corey here, and we're working on Tilly's Terror. This is our update here. It is going great. I've got my PLC right here. I've got it connected to the internet, which was not easy. Uh, I've got my HMI here, which I thought was gonna be much tougher to use than it is. And I've started writing some code here. So let's get into a couple facets of what's going on. Uh, try to keep it non-nerdy, but it's, it's gonna naturally be nerdy. So if you're not nerdy, take that second right now to scroll down and hit that like button anyway, because every time you click it, an engineer gets a slide rule. It's crazy. I don't know how it works, but it does. So one of the first things I wanted to do was work on our analog in and out. So we've got analog in for the voltage and the current of the capacitor bank. And then we've got a PWM out. So in our case, that's gonna be a zero to five volt output. And then we're gonna use a small chip to convert that to a PWM signal, which we will drive our transistor with. So we can see that signal right here in this blue column. We can see our voltage here over here in this gauge. I know it's hard, uh, super bright. And then we can see our charge current right here. Now I don't have that calibrated to anything, but you can see it's a little bit off zero. Now our charge PWM is controlled by this potentiometer. So this is essentially telling me what the current is going through. So I'm gonna tell it our current is high, so now it's gonna to wanna to naturally lower. And the farther I go, the faster it goes down. All right, so now we're gonna go up and the closer I get to that set point, the, the tighter it's gonna stay at a certain spot. So the interesting thing about this is it's not a closed loop system. I am the open loop. So when it outputs more PWM, it expects to get more current and it's not. So if I do this, it's thinking, oh, I gotta keep increasing it, increasing it because I'm not seeing any results. And then all of a sudden that's at hundred percent. But it's functioning perfectly and we need to trust that. Once we get it the big system, we can calibrate it a little bit more. This is pretty interesting. Uh, I got this big, beautiful uh, HMI screen and I don't want to leave it outside. I think it's going to get stolen. A tree branch is going to hit it, water, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Another thing to seal on the box. So I went ahead and got this other box at a highly discounted rate. And I'm going to go ahead and put this panel in this box. Uh, it's a used box. It's going to stay in my garage. It's going to act as part of the security system so that nobody can accidentally operate this thing while I'm not around. So yeah, a bunch of buttons are going to go in here and the screen itself. The, the HMI, if it's not detected by the PLC, will throw up an error because it's going to have its own e-stop in there. And if it doesn't see the e-stop from this panel, it's going to throw up an error in the PLC. We're going to shut down for a while. So that basically works like this. gonna blink all right and then I got to reset the e-stop and then I got to click this button and you can see it stopped blinking over there now I noticed this was very cool it had a line out on this and I was like Ooh, I could put in audio so the first thing is gentlemen start your engines right I 305 and then I thought wouldn't it be cool if it did this now get ready here we go yeah, so that is gonna be what it is. So I'm gonna put some speakers in that box uh, later on, won't do it the first thing. And we'll go ahead and just make this cool as cool can be. Today's show. Okay, I now. wanna celebrate those that are members here and support the channel. Your contributions help keep this channel on the air and growing and getting better and better every day. So this month, we are celebrating the following people. Yasin, Age Play Inc. Lex Roller, Milesh. Thank you for your contributions. We really appreciate them here. All right, so for those of you who are not members, if you would like to join, just scroll down a little bit and click that join button. We've got three different levels for you. Please select the one that was right for you. Now, let's get on with the show. Okay, now let's get into the programming a little bit. Now this programming is complicated. There are, there's a lot going on. We've got things that control flashing lights. We've got things that control the counter for this thing. So we also have to control the capacitor charge and the cabinet door, but we don't want to control all those things at the same time. 
So how do we do that? Well, we're using a stage gate process. So first stage, we have e-stop. Do we? Yes, no. All right, well, we're gonna continue to cycle in that stage until we have the e-stop. And if we ever lose the e-stop, we go back to that stage and make sure that it's there. All right, once we're, we have an e-stop, we can go to the next stage, which is starting the capacitor charge. So we're gonna take all the capacitors and arrange them in the, the 96 volt uh, configuration instead of the 24 volt. Once we do that, we're gonna start charging them. So we're gonna start monitoring the voltage, monitoring the charge rate, and exporting the PWM signal to charge them. Now remember, once it hits that 100% PWM charge, it's gonna start diminishing in current naturally. So what we wanna do is when it gets down to like one, maybe two amps, we're gonna go ahead and start turning on the air compressor so we have air pressure. All right, when we're using all that current to charge up the capacitors, we don't wanna be running the air compressor. So it's an either or thing. So once we have air pressure, we can start doing things like testing the brake system, making sure that's work. So that's a bunch of stages as well. We're gonna de-energize the brake, make sure we get the right signal. Energize the brake, make sure we get the right signal. De-energize the brake again, make sure we get the right signal. So there's a lot of stages in that, and if any of them throws up an error, that goes to a totally different stage, and we need to be throwing that up. It'll be displayed on the HMI, and then we can go ahead and troubleshoot that as need be. So there's a lot that's going on. We've got uh, the PLC command, we've got the HMI, uh, man, just tons of stuff, all the inputs and outputs. So. We're gonna be in this phase for quite a while. We'll probably make a prototype rig with the little catch car that goes back and forth. It's gonna look cool. So that is your update for Tilly's Terror for today. Make sure you take a second to like, share, and subscribe. And if you've made it this far, consider clicking that join button. So as you can tell, this stuff is not cheap and we need your support to help us get to a full built roller coaster. So please click that join button and find the level of support that is right for you, because there is one. And while you're there, why don't you check out our merch? Yes, we got this cool Math You Can Ride shirt. That's my favorite one. Uh, when I'm at the park, I get a lot of uh, responses from that, just being curious. Oh, I never thought about riding math. So yes, please take a second to check out our merch as well. Thank you and have a wonderful day. If you're not nerdy, hey, go ahead and scroll down just a little bit, click that like button, and go ahead to...